You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Today, this breakfast isn't just breakfast. It might be the first McDonald's breakfast you're having at McDonald's again. This lunch might be a weekly tradition you hadn't had in weeks. And this dinner might be the first one you bought for not just you in a while. Whatever this order is for you, McDonald's will be here to take it. Get more of the chicken you love with a delicious McChicken sandwich for $1. And for an extra buck, add a refreshing Dr. Pepper. Dining rooms are starting to reopen in certain communities. At participating McDonald's cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. In uncertain times, we could use someone to lean on. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma will stand by you with plan options to fit your budget. If you've recently lost your job, had a baby, or moved, you can still get the health care coverage you and your family need. Financial help may be available for those who qualify. Call 855-452-BLUE or visit hereforyouok.com to see if you're eligible to enroll. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma, a division of Healthcare Service Corporation, a mutual legal reserve company. Not to be a backseat driver, but can you say for sure you got the best monthly payment possible on your auto loan? Could it be that you might have gotten a better deal by shopping the loan at a few places and have a lower car payment? Next time, before you go car shopping, visit Communication Federal Credit Union first. Our auto loan experts will find you a perfect loan and get you the lowest monthly payment we can. Communication Federal, your auto loan experts. Restrictions apply. Federally insured by NCUA. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. A new year means it's time for a new home network that can keep up. With Cox Internet, you have the speed and coverage your family needs to stay connected. You'll enjoy Cox's fiber-based hybrid network with options for fast upload and download speeds. And if your household has lots of connected devices, panoramic Wi-Fi may be the perfect fit thanks to its additional control features. Plus, with advanced security on panoramic Wi-Fi, you'll know each connected device is securely protected 24-7. A whole world of connectivity is yours with Cox Internet. Learn more at Cox.com. Sunday night. I must be Alan Ray. This must be Sunday night with Alan Ray, the show where we take a look at this giant blue ghetto rock that we're hurling through space at an unfathomable speed, and we ask the eternal question. What 
in the wide, wide world of sports is it going on here? Hell if I know. It all started this week. Oh, and by the way, by the way, if you find yourself traversing about the interwebs and it's 9.06 dinner time, the only time, the only time that matters, and um, you hear the sound of my voice, get in the chat room, if at all possible. Get in the chat room and uh, be joined by miscreants and mayhem makers. Distinguished group of people, such as GR, Jeff, who you just heard, just heard great show on artificial intelligence. That's something I'm just starting to dive into. I've mentioned it on this show a few times. Um, and and I don't know if I told you all this or not. I can't remember because I'm getting old. I'm forgetful. I actually uh, asked chat GPT to uh, write me a blue song about an ugly dog. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to record it, and I'll sing it for you. Uh, we got Ordy in there. We got myself. We got Mike. We got Evil. We got Northern Biker. We got Rex, and we got Raptor. Lou was in there. Hopefully, she comes back. We need we need that rose in the middle of all these thorns, right, guys? So anyway, it all started a couple of days ago when um, some buddy got all excited because their book was going to be released. And that book is called White Rural Rage, The Threat to American Democracy. All about you unwashed, moronic, flyover state hicks. You people who don't have the sense enough to move into the large cities, the cultural areas. We look down our nose at you because we think you're less than human. And you, you, good people, are the threat to American democracy. (laughs) And the mocking began. The mocking began like you've never seen before in your life. I, I just threw it out there. I mean, it was like two days after this guy tweeted that, and I just threw it out there, and I hashtagged white rural rage, and, and I just, it, it all started from there. And that tweet took off, and then it just, and I'm sure somebody had that, you know, somebody's always got the hashtag before you do. I mean, somebody's had to figure it out. And, um, and it just, it went crazy from there. It went crazy from there. And there's twitchy articles. And there's there's um who was the other guy that there was some other place uh, that that actually took off on it. The, the guy has to know that we're mocking him. He has to know we think. It, but I started thinking about it, and and this is uh, white rural rage. The threat to American democracy is from Tom Schaller and Paul Waldman. Uh, one of them had like MSNBC in their bio, and it's like okay, that explains it. Whatever. Whatever. And I started thinking, I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to read it. I'm not going to give them my money. They can just kiss my hairy white butt. Um, I started thinking about the whole scenario. I mean, this all started very clearly. I mean, the the push, the push for the anti-rural movement started way back. Coincided, strangely enough, the, the, the big push with the uh, election of one Barack Hussein Obama. It seems like a lot of things correlated with the election of Barack Hussein Obama. But where we stand right now, okay, you you are guilty. You are guilty because you do not live in giant living areas, giant cities, giant. And, yes, Northern Biker, that is a sweet ride. He's got a picture of his bike in there. I appreciate a good motorcycle. I really do. But I started thinking about the situation we're in. And you look at where we're at right now. What what they mean by, by, you know, white rural rage. What they mean by that is white men mostly. White conservative men, white Christian conservative straight men, to be precise. That's what they mean by white rural rage. Now, you know as well as I do, there's no such thing as white rural rage. It's something that this guy just made up. He uh, threw a bunch of things together, and he's blaming it all on flyover state hicks. 
even though very, very, very clearly, and we have proof beyond any kind of doubt, that the anti-flyover um, state movement started not with the right. It, you know, it started with the left thinking that everybody's a hick and everybody's an idiot unless they're from New York or L.A., and they can't stand the fact that we can survive out here without them. We don't need them. We don't need Los Angeles. We don't need New York. You say, well, we fund you. No, you, you really don't. We feed you. But I've reached the conclusion, folks. And this is freeing. Now, hear me out. Hear me out. If you fall into the category of the unprotected class, and by that, I, I mean straight, white, Christian, conservative, or conservatarian, or libertarian, or whatever you are. If you're, if you're the white male, especially, and, and you're straight, and you're, you're not flamboyant or anything like that, you may as well just do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. Live your life. Ignore the morons. Ignore the these uneducated, educated people. They're, they're stupid educated. They really are. <clears throat> they're myopic. Myopic morons is what they are. Um, the reason you need to do this, the reason you need to just live your life and just completely ignore the noise, completely ignore what these people are screeching up and down about, vote, vote against them at every chance you get, but... When they get in your face and say, well, you're the problem, just laugh at them, mock them, laugh at them, and just walk away. Because if even if you changed, okay, if you change, if you try to step in line with their cult, their mantra, their, their religion that they have, this, this, uh, this anti, anti-you religion, there is no appeasing these people. There is no appeasing the perpetual victims. You are the villain. And it doesn't matter. You can cut yourself. You can do whatever you want. I mean, you can try to appease them. You can give them everything. Give them your money. Give them and just bow down before them. Take a knee, whatever. And you're still the villain. You're still the bad guy. You're still a white, conservative, flyover state, rural male. You are to blame. So seeing that there is no appeasing them, seeing that there is no gaining their favor, do what you want. Live your life. Ignore them. Raise cattle. Eat meat. Eat meat. Have campfires. Burn fossil fuels. It doesn't matter because you cannot appease these people. And it's freeing to think that way. It takes the pressure completely out. Jeff, yes, Jeff being the alien, gray rural rage. I'm with you, buddy, because every once in a while I look in the mirror and I, I kind of look gray just before the sun starts coming out and I get a tan. I got a tan today, I think, a little bit. <laughs> but the problem with um, the problem with this cult on the left, and and I caught this my last year of college. You know, I, I don't. I make I made it known on the show. You know, I went back to college late, finished my degree, and this was just as Obama was was getting his teeth into the presidency. Um, one of my last classes, when they I, I caught the very beginnings of the push for the diversity, equity, and inclusion movement. They started talking about the equity part that it's not enough. It's not enough to be invested in a company that. It's not enough to have equality. It's about equity. It's 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 a ver- it's a difference between shareholders, which actually have a stake, a financial stake in the company. They're putting a risk in the company, and stakeholders, which the company affects. I said, if you're a stakeholder, you got a big say as a shareholder, and that is, and like I said, I've I've got I've still got the textbook, and and I can still show you where it's at in this thing is where the whole, if you've got a business, you didn't build it mantra came from, from the Obamas and, you know, when they started saying all this stuff. This this was starting to ramp up back then. This is 15 years ago, folks. This is nothing new. So, and, and the, the concept of this, and I'm trying to make it where I can, I can 
relay this information to you without screwing it up. Their perception of reality, their perception of the planet we live on is that we are all on a big bus. Listen to the way they talk. Listen to the way they talk. They, they tell you this. This is what they're, they envision, that the earth is a big bus. And then if you are in, and I'm not going to say the W word too much, but if you are in one of the unprotected classes, the privileged classes, which, you know, they don't really, they, they, they can't really tell you why you're privileged because I don't know. I had to fight for everything I had since I was from day one. I mean, I, I had to get myself out of poverty. I didn't have any help. But anyways, that's that's beside the point. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because I'm I'm the W word, okay? So that makes me, you know, the villain. But anyways, um they believe that we're on this bus, that the that the world is a bus. And if 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 you are white, if you are a conservative male, you are the problem. You've been in, f- in the front seats of the bus. You've been in the front seats of the bus the entire time. The entire time this earth has been around, white people have been running it, white people have been controlling it, and they are the problem. In spite of what history tells us. <laughs> so because you are in the front seat, you've been there too long, it is now time for you to go to the back seat and one of the protected classes is now going to go to the front seat now what does that involve think about that for a minute what are they telling you when they say that somebody needs to go to the back of the bus it means that they must eliminate everything you have built they must eliminate your existence to put you in the very back seat so somebody else can have a turn Listen to how they talk. They say this. They say this all the time. Somebody else's turn. Hillary Clinton is furious. She's furious. She's she's right now. She's seething somewhere out in the woods talking to Bigfoot, which he's probably exhausted listening to her. Because the election she was supposed to win, it was her turn. It was her turn. She was supposed to be the chosen. She was supposed to be the queen. She was supposed to be the one that stepped up, the first woman president. And she didn't get it because Trump. Trump should be in the back of the bus. All the white people should be in the back of the bus. The very, very back seats reserved for me. Me and you, my friends, a lot of my friends here. Because you are a white, straight, Christian, conservative, male, whatever. You checked all the boxes. And then these myopic morons come out with this book called White Rural Rage, The Threat to American Democracy. <laughs> it just makes me laugh. See, the, the problem is, is this isn't a bus, okay? This isn't a bus. I've studied this. This is part of what I studied when I went to college before the, the woke took over the colleges. What they're not looking at is success begets success. Success breeds success. This is something that is regardless. It doesn't matter if you are black, red, yellow, white, brown. What race you are, what religion you are, if you're male or female, Martian, alien, When you study the successful people, the truly successful people, not the ones that inherited their wealth, not the ones that that is in their fifth, sixth inbred generation of just being rich for the sake of being rich, but the people who started out with nothing and gained success, when you study them and you pull out their formulas, what they did, what they did right, what they did wrong, look at their failures, look at their successes, your odds of becoming successful, increase. Now, you might not be wildly successful. You might not be the next billionaire, which society, you know, society judges everybody on how much money you make, and that's that's a load of crap. But I can tell you from personal experience, just studying the successes of other people helps you in your life to become more successful at what you do. And Ordy, you're exactly right. Rising tide lifts all boats. 
the deal we have going on right now is the cult of the giant bus, the giant earth bus, which is a cult, what they want to do, whether they'll tell you this to to your face or not, and whether they even know, because I suspect that some of them don't even know. They haven't really thought this out yet. They're just parrots. They're mindless parrots that just repeat what their overlords tell them. And it's, it's boring and it's very tiresome. Their entire goal, if you, if you look at the big picture, is to dumb everybody down to the lowest common denominator. Everybody. There's not going to be anybody in the front of the bus. Everybody's going to be crammed in the back of the bus. And there's going to be one or two people, the driver and a couple of people looking in back, controlling them with a whip. Where this is going is everybody's going to be in the back of the bus. The whole movement, the whole DEI movement has been hijacked by people that are anti-white. Let's start calling it what it is, folks. It is classic racism. And the funniest part about it, we are watching in real time governments, businesses, developing systemic racism and implementing systemic racism in all levels of government, business, academia. And if you question what they're doing, You are labeled a white supremacist. White supremacist. Well, how dare you question? You need to go to the back of the bus because somebody else's turn is at the front of the bus. Well, it's a moronic philosophy. It's a moronic theory. It's, It's one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. We're not on a bus. Life isn't a bus. So that's why I pretty much ignore it. That's why I mock these... It's funny because they're white men (laughs) who hate themselves so much that they put out a book called White Rural Rage, a threat to American democracy. You know, the real threat to American democracy is from those who insist that leftist ideology is the only valid ideology. And they will do anything. We saw this in the last election. We saw this in the last election, free and clear. They will do anything, including imprisoning and disqualifying their opponents to maintain their grip on the mindless sheep roaming this nation. And I'm sorry, but most of those sheep live on the coast. You can tell by the way they vote. Threat to democracy. Trying to imprison your political opponent, isn't that a threat to democracy? When you can't vote for your choice, isn't that a threat to democracy? I I, I thought it was. And I look around out here. I live in white rural rage country. I live in the middle of a cornfield. I live out in no man's land. I am surrounded by people of all colors. We love each other. We're great neighbors. We get along. If one of the neighbor's critters get out, another one gets and takes it back and say, here, man, if somebody needs help, we pitch in. We help them. I don't see anybody being ragey. Now you start messing with us. You start messing with, you start threatening to come out here and make us move into your living centers be stacked a hundred high and shipping crates for houses, eating bugs and tofu. Yeah, we're going to get a little ragey. We're going to tell you to, to get out. We're going to pretty much throw you on your butt and send you back to your little cities. If that's being ragey, so we're ragey. So big deal. And this is why I really am apathetic towards the cause of what they're doing. We were raised. My generation was raised that everybody bleeds red blood. Skin color doesn't matter. They were teaching us that you accept people for who they are. It's content of character. In the meantime, they were teaching everybody else that you were the enemy. You're the villain. All of a sudden, 
the same people, the same people who were responsible for keeping slavery as long as it did, the same people who basically were responsible, uh, still are responsible for horrendous living conditions in poor black neighborhoods and in some of the Latino neighborhoods around the nation, the same people that keep these people pressed to the wall and in control are out there telling us that we are the bad people. I don't buy it. I don't buy it at all. I'm not even going to give it a second thought when somebody gets in my face about it. Just you're full of crap. It's not the way the world goes. We're not on a bus. The only statistic they seem to not get into is the statistic that there is 14 million poverty-ridden white people in this nation. 7 million poverty-ridden black people in this nation. And who knows? Who knows how many illegal aliens living in poverty Succumbing to sweatshops, being made into mules, carrying drugs, whores, prostitutes, child trafficking. Who knows how many of those people are here? None of it, folks, none of it is acceptable. But what they want you to believe is that just because of your skin color, you are responsible for what happened, even though they're the ones that came up with the original systemic racism that led us to where we are right now. These same people. They haven't changed. They just changed the colors of the people they hate and blame. They want you to go extinct. That's exactly what they want. And they yell about it. They preach it from the roof. And if you don't start actually voting for your best interest, which is against the left at every single turn, Don't be surprised if two generations from now, there isn't a white person left in this this nation. Mike, have a good night, man. I see you. He's got a jet out of here. It's past his bedtime. You know those old people. (laughs) So there you have it. There you have it. That is, that is why I had the whole white rural rage thing going this week on social media. Because I'm mocking them. I'm mocking them. I'm laughing at them. They're stupid. And it's just funny. My gosh, it's blasted through 20, 28 minutes of the show <laughs> ranting my white rural rage. I'm going to take a quick break. When I come back, we got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about. A little ham radio stuff. A little bad news for the presidential race. And I don't know. I got all kinds of fun. So maybe even a little bit of prepping stuff. I don't know. Don't go anywhere. I'll be back in just a moment. Listen now and don't forget. If you go for that solid jive, you can always keep the dream alive. Palin, palin, palin with that. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, Think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. 
Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. We lost, we lost a great individual this week. Um, and he, he, he led a good life. He was, he was kind of older, but, um, whether you know it or not, um, Bob Heil passed away this week, Bob Heil, K nine EID as we know him in the ham radio community, but he was much more, he was 83 years old. So he lived a really good life, but, um, he, he fought a valiant year long battle with cancer, passed peacefully surrounded by his family. Um, our condolences go to the Heil family. Now, if you don't know who I'm talking about, <clears throat> this is an interesting individual, and he has had an effect on your life, I guarantee. If you've ever been to a rock concert, um, <laughs> Bob Heil, uh, and this is from the ARRL website, which, you know, it's kind of a ham radio thing. And, and even though, like I said, he's huge in the ham radio community, he's a rock star in the ham radio community. Before that, he was just kind of a rock star in the rock community. Heil founded Heil Sound in 1966, through which he created the template for modern concert sound systems for musicians like the Grateful Dead, the Who, Joe Walsh, and Peter Frampton. The talk box used on the iconic live record Frampton Comes Alive was Heil's design. His audio engineering products have been featured in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and he was honored in 2007 with the Parnelli Audio Innovator Award for his impact on the live sound industry. A quote from him, it says, My life has been about achieving great sound, whether on the concert stage or in the amateur radio world. Um, he recounted in 2022, I've watched Heil Sound go from a regional sound company to a world-class microphone manufacturer. This company has been my passion. Now, parallel to his commercial and artistic successes in life was his passion for amateur radio, and we all in the amateur radio uh, community know this. He was an active ham radio since a young age, and merged his expertise in audio engineering with his love for radio. Heil Ham Radio was founded to produce microphones, headsets, and other gear for radio amateurs with emphasis on high-quality auto. Now, Heil was also known as a mentor for those who enjoyed help, you know, he enjoyed helping others find success in ham radio. Recently, his uh, grandson, Charlie Hartley, became licensed uh, to surprise Heil for his birthday. 
Um, and if you went to some of the bigger ham fest, Hamcation and, and Dayton and places like that, you would see him walking around, walking around making friends. He's a great guy. A uh, lot of the people, I've, I've never met him personally, but a lot of the people I know just rave about him. They say, you know, hey, just like just like some normal dude walks up to you, starts talking, you look at his name tag, go, oh, my God, it's Bob Heil. Um, he was a titan in a lot of areas. He was very generous with his time. He offered a lot of insights, had the heart of a philanthropist in the ARRL uh, society. He was a gentleman to the core, making friends easily and everywhere he went, from rock stars to captains of industry. Said, so, um, and this is from uh, ARRL director of development Kevin Beal says I consider it a real privilege to have become a friend to him too, all uh, because of amateur radio. So I could go on and on and on about him, but uh, my condolences to the Heil family and uh, what a great life! What a great life when you've affected so many people that they uh, they write this type of thing about you <laughs> that when you pass that it it's a it's a shock and it's it's a upsetting to a lot of people but it's also they honor you with with the writings cuz i mean Heil sound equipment's great stuff um in fact i've been i've been looking to get a Heil headset microphone for my Yezu when i'm talking on it it's good stuff but um yeah you know that he's the one um, and i think the the legend about him is that uh the grateful dead were thrown out of a venue. They were going to play at a venue, and they couldn't play because, you know, at the time, you know, ooh, they was into a marriage of one um, So they set out in another place, and they didn't have a sound system, and Bob Heil set up their sound system. And it became one of their iconic systems that they used on tour over and over again. Um, and so he, he had a big effect on a lot of people. Great thing. So, you know, it's cool. It's cool. Uh, you know, when, when you can have that effect that stamp on people leave that type of legacy man that's that's success right there there's there's more wealthy people i'm sure there's more famous people but to me that is true success like we were talking about during the first half hour when i was ranting and raving like a a white rural rage lunatic (laughs) other ham radio america's last morse code station has been revived this is from the Atlantic. Now, Maritime Morse Code was formally phased out in 1999. But in California, there's a group of enthusiasts who call themselves the Radio Squirrels, keeping the tradition alive. Um, one of the last maritime messages sent out was a message that said, Calling all. This is our last cry before eternal silence. And with that, in January 1997, the French Coast Guard transmitted its final message in Morse code. Ships in distress had radioed out dits and dives from the area of from the Titanic all the way to the area of Titanic the movie. In near instant time, the beeps could be deciphered by Morse code station thousands of miles away. Now, the reason that is is because Morse code uh, uses a very thin bandwidth, a thin, cutting, powerful bandwidth that can be picked up. Miles and miles away. It is the first digital communication. First used to send messages over land in 1844. Morse code outlived the telegraph age by becoming the lingua franca of the sea. But by the late 20th century, satellite radio was turning it into a dying language, and in February of 1990, 1999, I should say, it officially ceased being the standard for maritime communication. So what happened was, is these guys, radio squirrels is what they're called, and this is nestled within the Point Rise National Seashore of San Francisco. KPH Maritime Radio is the last operational Morse code station in the North America. The station, which consists of two buildings some 25 miles apart, once watched over the waters of the Pacific and Indian Oceans. Both KPH sites shut down in 97, but a few years later, a couple of radio enthusiasts brought them back to life. The crew has gotten slightly larger over the years. Its member calls themselves the Radio Squirrels. Every Saturday, they beep out maritime news and weather reports and receive any stray messages. Much of their communication is with the SS Jeremiah O'Brien, a World War II-era ship permanently parked in San Francisco's pier. That's kind of cool. And if you look at the picture of their setup, it's, man, if you're a nostalgia fan, it is all analog, old-fashioned, 
just the best. And I guess they, you know, they search eBay. They, they go out of their way to try to find parts and stuff to keep all of this stuff going. Very nostalgic. So if you're in the San Francisco area, look it up. And the thing with Morse code, a lot of people say, oh, Morse code, you know, that's dying. There's no need for that. If you go down to the lower section of any of the ham bands, there is a ton of Morse code still going on. Um, in fact, I think it's getting more and more popular. I'm slowly learning it, slowly learning it. It's hard. If you don't start it young, keep at it. It's kind of hard. And I didn't start it young, and I chase a lot of squirrels, so I don't keep at it. So it's kind of cool to know that that's going on, that, that somebody somewhere, and hopefully generations will take over this task and keep it going. Keep it going just as, as a as a memorial to what shipping used to look like. That's my ham radio stuff for the day. What other things are going on in the world? Doom! Yes, doom. You got to love it. Um, I've been laughing about this. U.S. officials, according to CBS News, says there's a deal on the table for a proposed ceasefire hostage release uh, deal with Hamas. And it's funny because this was yesterday. Israel's, they said Israel's essentially endorsed a framework of proposed Gaza ceasefire and hostage release deal. It is now up to Hamas to agree to it. And then you turn around today and you find out that Israel is not going to go to the release deal because the release isn't going to happen. Reuters come out today and said um, that they're just not going to go to it. They're just going to ignore it. Where is that? Where is that? Ah, I've lost it. But the problem they're having is is um, Hamas isn't going to release all of the list of the live hostages. They're not going to release the list. So Israel doesn't even want to waste their time with them. This is going to go on for a while, folks. I think it's going to escalate more and more. I think it's going to drive, and I think I think Hamas, their main goal is to draw the entire Middle East into the war, as many people as they can, because they want to eliminate Israel. Let's face it, and the absolute long flamingos that are um, setting themselves on fire and protesting and doing all this stuff. I don't think they realize what. Well, maybe you know what? Let me take that back. They realize fully what they're doing. They're complicit in trying to eliminate Israel. When you listen to what they are really saying, they're complicit. They, they want to do this. They want Israel to go away. Oh, let's talk about the southern border. That was a big one. We had um, our commander-in-chief, ha-ha, he-he, ho-ho, down at the southern border this week. We also had Donald Trump, who was running for president once again down there. I think the reason that Joseph Biden, president of the United States, was down there is because Donald Trump went there. Donald Trump met with Greg Abbott. They discussed things. Joe Biden meandered about like a lost dementia patient with some of the Border Patrol agents walking around with him, trying to make him look maybe not so lost. And the funny thing about it, Fox News came out with this uh, this morning that uh, Border Patrol Union mocked Biden over Texas visit. Said he called the lid, he hit a beach, and he took a nap. So the uh, we'll see. Border Pro, the Border Patrol Union mocked President Biden on Saturday for his trip to the Texas border this week. Board AF1, take nap. Wake up in place called Brownsville, the union wrote on X, formerly Twitter, in a joke itinerary of all his day, along with a photo of Biden resting in a beach lounge chair. Read large teleprompter message. It's all Trump's fault. Board AF1, ask who people in the green uniforms were. Told they strap illegal aliens. Express horror, take a nap. Wake up, call a lid, hit beach, take a nap. <laughs> that was Biden's agenda. That's That's rough. That's sad. These people weren't fans. Not fans at all. In the meantime, Washington Post comes out with this should be unsettling article 
that says ever more undocumented Indian migrants follow the donkey route to America. Billboards crowd the small lanes of this northern Indian city, calling out for those who dream of a different future. A sign in the Punjabi language beckons, let's go to America. An immigration agent driving on an overpass amid the sea of billboards reflected on the city's brisk migration business. Most of these agents would have tried sending clients through an illegal route to the U.S., said Punjabi uh, agent, adding that he himself had sent 60 such clients along routes uh, that hopscotch through various countries before arriving in Mexico or Canada, where the migrants walk across the U.S. border. Indians have come to make up the third largest group of undocumented immigrants in the United States, according to Pew Research's Center 2021 estimates, which put the number of such Indians at 725,000. India is the only country in the top five outside of Latin America since, uh, and since 2011, the number of undocumented Indians in the United States has grown by 70%, the fastest growth of all nationalities. Now, weren't we told, weren't we told by this administration that people are coming across that border to escape regimes in South America, escape starvation, escape poverty work conditions. Another lie. Another lie. Absolute. Not even anywhere near serious. And you're going to see some Crazy stuff between now and November. I guarantee you, you're going to see it. Because right now, right now, the Biden administration, the, the, the people who are propping him up, who have the stick up his butt that keeps him actually vertical instead of falling over and being face in the mud, they can't be sleeping well at night. The New York Times, Siena Poll came out, and Twitchy had this article just before I came on, and I grabbed this going, wow, this is perfect for what I'm talking about right now. New York Times Siena poll just put out, do you plan on voting for Biden or Trump? Overall, 43% for Biden, 48 for Trump. Men, 40% for Biden, 49% for Trump. Women, 46 and 46%. Tied. Of course, 18 to 29-year-olds, they're, they're warped little minds who are, are now all communists. 53% for Biden, 41 for Trump. Most of them won't even show up to the polls because they're too, never mind, I'm not going to tell you why. Um, <laughs> white people, white people, 40% for Biden, 53 for Trump. Black people, 40, uh, 66 for Biden, 23 for Trump. And Hispanics, 40% for Biden, 46% for Trump. Now, here is an interesting eye-opening stat. Biden has lost, it says Biden 2020, out of the, the all of the people, all of the people that voted for Joe Biden in 2020, 83% are going to vote for him again. That's a big loss. 97% of the people who voted for Trump are going to vote for him again. Do the math. Do the math. There is going to have to be a lot of ballot harvesting in order to overcome that a significant amount of ballot harvesting. Folks, I think you're going to see some pretty big stuff happening between now and November. Oh, another pandemic, World War III, nuclear bombs. I don't know. There's going to be something you can pretty much guarantee. <clears throat> Finally, wow, it's 949 already. We're just blasting through this hour. I've been kind of laughing about this. It's not really funny. Don't, don't get me wrong. The situation's not funny. Oh, but the history of what's going on is kind of funny. Um, Sierra Nevada region is getting dumped on. Ordy, is this you again? Is this your region? I know it's close. I know it's close. But Donner's Pass especially, if you don't know the history of Donner's Pass, that's where uh, people got trapped and they had to eat the dead in order to stay alive is uh, just getting swamped. There's like this huge backup pile up that they, they finally got some traffic moving. They're finally getting it dug out. And, um, you know, my, my first thought was, hey, bring a friend, bring a fork. You know, I mean, 
hopefully those people had the common sense. It's north of Ordy, Tamring, the Reno area. Okay. I was wondering. Um, but Donner's Pass is noted, noted, a huge history of just getting absolutely blasted. And, of course, Al Gore. Al Gore, in his infinite stupidity and myopic moronity, came out with, you know, well, this is climate change. This is climate change, people. You deserve this. This is climate change. Really, it happens there like every few years. Donner's Pass is noted for having these vicious storms. Was it climate change back when uh, when the people got, uh, the Donner Party got trapped there? That's why they call it Donner's Pass, by the way. Was it climate change back then, Al? Let me ask you that. So somebody in the NSA, the FBI, or whatever, who's listening to the show, uh, get a hold of Al Gore and ask him, was that climate change back then? And, and, and here's the funny part about it. I have a really, uh, I, I, I got a problem with somebody like Al Gore. 1846, thank you, GR. I have a problem with somebody like Al Gore who probably has the carbon footprint of about 15,000 cattle because he flies all over the world. He's got like, what, two, three mansions? One of them's right on the water. So he he must not be a big believer in, in ocean rising. I have a problem with him telling me how I should live. Him telling me that we need to get rid of red meat. We need to eat bugs we need to i don't know live in shipping crates and living centers and and save the planet i'll take one for the team mr gore take one for the team why don't you sell everything you have stop flying all over the world you don't need to do that anymore you don't need to fly for meetings anymore we have zoom we have google meet we have skype I use these things daily at work to people all over the world. They work great. What is it? Is it your prestige, Mr. Gore, that you have to fly into these places? Is that the problem? You want to be the big shot? But yet you're going to tell me, you're going to tell me that I have to turn my heat down to 45 degrees when it's 20 below zero. (laughs) Hey, Jeff... And already zoom. I <laughs> I gotta do that. <laughs> oh, hopefully, hopefully uh, the Chinese aren't listening through my Zoom program. I gotta have it on here because I have meetings once in a while. It? Oh well, what are they gonna do? Look at me. Hi guys. Hi Chinese people. Hi FBI. Hi NSA. Glad you can join me today. I'm, I'm wondering. I suppose you're wondering why I'm gathering you here. But anyways. Um, Why do you got to do that? You and your WEF buddies spew more carbon into the atmosphere. In fact, if you, if if if, let's put it this way, if the WEF, if the climate cult itself, just the people in the climate cult, especially on the top, the ones that want to tell you and I that we need to eat grass and, you know, wear hemp skirts and live in a shipping container and never go out of the house unless it's time to work and then they're going to take all of our paychecks so they can live high on the hog. If we take all of those people at the very top that are, that are screeching about climate change and clamp down on them, we wouldn't have to worry about climate change anymore. If we were to just put them in prison cells and say, okay, now do all your stuff from there. You don't really need to go out. We're going to feed you bugs. We're going to feed you uh, grass and you're going to get you're you're going to own nothing and like it. And do you like it? Do you like this kind of lifestyle that that you want it for us? You like living this? Okay, we're just going to keep you there anyways because well, I know. Jeff, you can eat it, you can smoke it. There's edibles. You can do whatever you want with it. Anyways. <laughs> uh, but you have to make fun of these people. That takes me right back full circles to the beginning of the show. You have to mock these people. Just laugh at them. Live your life. Do your thing. Be humble and be good to people. Be good to all people. Enjoy your life. I don't understand these people that walk around in a panic all the time. They're miserable. They're miserable, nasty, disgusting people. And they want you to be miserable along with them. They hate you because you're not. Get that through your head. 
The reason they hate you is because you're not miserable. And the the best thing you can do to fight these these cultists on the left, these anti-rural, anti-white, anti-male, anti-straight cultists, climate cult activists, the best way to piss them off, the best way to absolutely destroy them is to be happy. Live your life in a profound way and ignore them. They hate to be ignored. You have to understand that that all of this, a lot of this stuff, much of this stuff is only about 1% of the people that actually feel this way and 99% of people that use this stuff to get attention. It's like that woman that's got mysteriously four transgender kids that was in the news this week. You don't have four transgender kids, lady. You have four kids that you warped their brains. You destroyed them. And now you're going to neuter them. You're going to spay them. You're going to cut their genitals off. And you'll never have grandkids that will be the end of your family line. And thank God that it is not going to continue from there. But those poor kids will probably grow up to commit suicide or be complete degenerates, freeloaders. I doubt they'll be successful. If they are, I'll be shocked. It's not saying that they won't. Maybe they will escape the hell that their mother's putting them through and make something of themselves. You can only pray that they do. You don't have four transgender kids, lady. We didn't go from all of a sudden all of this being, you know, once in a while you run across somebody that's gay. Okay, well, it's your life. To all of a sudden, everybody, everybody, everywhere you look has 375,000 genders and, you know, they're mutilating themselves. And then it's just, well, all it is is a sterilization program. They're going to wake up to that someday. This whole thing is a sterilization program. They're talking your kids into sterilizing themselves to reduce the population. That's, that's what I feel this is. That's, I think, the real behind-the-scenes makeup of this is. All right. Up next, we have Rowdy, Rick Robinson. America Off the Rails should be a good one. Keep it locked on KLRN Radio all week long. we got some of the greatest. You know, we're, we're up to seven days a week now, aren't we? We're up to programming seven days a week. So there's always going to be something. There's always going to be a day. It's always fun. We always have a good time. We rant. We rave. We have fun. And it's not just politics. It's a little bit of everything on this. So... Keep it locked. Bookmark KLRNRadio.com. And why go anywhere else? I'm Alan Ray. I'll be back, Lord willing, next week. I know there's going to be two weeks where I probably won't be doing the show. Uh, the first day is the 17th, and I, I, I'm going to try to get back and get something ready for the Sunday after that. Not making any guarantee. i got a week-long conference. It's, it's going to be insane. So I might be missing in action for two weeks, but I'm sure between Jeff and Rick, they can pick up the slack. Looking at you guys. God bless y'all. We'll talk again soon. Stay tuned for Rick Robinson. America off the rails. I'm out. Peace.